Yo guys, today we are gonna delve into the depths of Linny, a 5 star character and a bow user wielding the pyro element. He is best for teams that consist of mono pyro characters. Linny is a playable Numa aligned pyro character, he is skilled and eloquent. Linny is Fontaine's great magician and Lynette's twin brother. This guide lets you know about his best artifacts, weapons, constellations and much more. And starting with his talents, his normal attack card force translocation. Linny's basic attack sequence with his bows consists of up to 4 consecutive shots, showcasing his adeptness with ranged combat. Additionally, he possesses a unique plunging attack where he launches a shower of arrow mid air before descending, causing area of effect damage upon impact with the ground. However, it's Linny's charge attack that truly sets him apart by drawing his bow string to varying degrees. He can execute more precise aim shots. At the first level of charge, his arrows become infused with pyro energy, dealing pyro damage upon impact. But on the second level, Linny unleashes a prop arrow which not only deals pyro damage but also conjures a grim malkin hat upon striking his target. What makes his ability even more intriguing is Linny's unique mechanic. When firing a prop arrow and maintaining above 60% of his maximum health, he sacrifices a portion of his HP to gain a prop surplus stack, up to maximum of 5 stacks. However, this effect fades after 30 seconds of being out of combat, ensuring a strategic balance in his playstyle. It's worth noting that Linny's health won't drop below 60% of his maximum HP through his mechanism. And to his elemental skill, with a graceful flourish of his hat, Linny conjures a mesmerizing display of fireworks that not only clears all existing prop surplus stack but also inflicts AoE pyro damage to enemies with his line of sight. The potency of his bewildering light's ability increases in correlation with the number of stacks Linny expended prior to activation. Moreover, utilizing the skill triggers a health regeneration effect for Linny, the amount restores scaling proportionality with his maximum HP. However, the spectacle doesn't end here. When Linny employs this skill in conjunction with a Grin Malkin hat already present on the battlefield, the fireworks trigger a detonation unleashing an explosion of pyro energy. This explosion mirrors the damage output of a charged pyrotechnic strike, delivering devastating AoE damage to nearby foes. And to his elemental burst, Linny turns into a Grin Malkin cat that can move around quickly. This is not same as the Grin Malkin hat as they are two different props. When the cat gets close to enemies, it sends flames falling down on them, dealing at most one instance of pyro damage to each opponent. When the duration ends, Linny dismisses the Grinmalkin cat and ignites firework that deals AoE pyro damage, summons the Grinmalkin hat and grants himself one stack of prop surplus. Grinmalkin cat can be actively cancelled, and his passive one, perilous performance. If Linny consumes HP when firing a prop arrow, the Grinmalkin hat summoned by the arrow will restore 3 energy to Linny and increase damage dealt by 80% of his attack, but only when the arrow hits an opponent. And as passive 2 conclusive ovation, when dealing damage to an opponent affected by Pyro, Linny will receive a 60% increase to his base attack stat with a further 20% bonus for each Pyro party member other than Linny. He can gain a total of 100% increased damage to opponents affected by Pyro through this passive. And as utility passive Trivial Observation gives an exploration bonus, displays the location of nearby resources unique to Fontaine on the minimap. And moving to his constellation is C1 Whimsical Wonders. Linny can have two Green Malkin hats present at once. Additionally, Prop Arrows will summon two Green Malkin hats and grant Linny one extra stack of Prop Surplus. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. Linny's kit primarily revolves around utilizing double charge attacks to summon Green Malkin hats, which taunt enemies and explode with a high scaling damage modifier to deal significant damage. Additionally, these summons can be exploded prematurely by utilizing Linny's elemental skill allowing them to deal damage while also healing Linny based on the surplus. With access to his constellation, Linny can not only deal more damage by summoning two of these hats at once but also, since an extra stack of prop surplus is generated, it can allow him to heal more. The cooldown of the effect aligns well with the Linny's elemental skill, making it easier to time during a rotation. Overall, this constellation benefits Linny through additional damage, defense and healing potential. And a C2, when Linny is on the field, he will gain a stack of crisp focus every 2 seconds. This will increase his crit damage by 20%, max 3 stacks. This effect will be cancelled when Linny leaves the field. Linny's second constellation is by far his best, considering it has a simple activation condition that provides significant damage value. Since Linny is an on-field DPS character, players can expect him to be on the field quite often. 
which in itself allow him to gain an additional 60% crit damage. With his own ascension stack being crit rate, combined with this effect, Lini can achieve exponential crit values. Even when luck has not favored their build for him, it's important to keep in mind however that to extract the best value from his constellation. Players should focus on building a team where other characters do not require frequent swapping, as each time Lini is swapped out, he will lose the crisp focus tag and need to regain them. And the C3 increases his normal attack level by 3. And the C4, after an opponent is hit by Lini's pyro charge attack, this opponent pyro resistance will be decreased by 20% for 6 seconds. Lini's fourth constellation allows for reducing enemy's pyro resistance, which on its own is not bad. But it's not as significant when compared to his other constellations. This is because players can achieve similar effects by utilizing characters such as Shangling or Zongli instead, or rely on Virtus and Venerer artifacts that equipped on an Animo support character. Additionally, since Lini's charge attacks are generally focused on single targets in situations where there are many enemies, it may not only highly effective in contributing to the team's damage output, otherwise Lini would need to focus on swapping between targets with each of his charge attacks. And in C5, this increase is Elam Tulba's level by 3. And to the C6, when Lini fires a prop arrow, he will fire a pyrotechnic strike reprise that will deal 80% of a pyrotechnic strike's damage. This damage is considered charge attack damage. Lini's final constellation allows him to focus even more on charge attacks, while Lini's charge attacks have good scaling up until this constellation. Most of his damage still comes from the summons rather than the charge attacks themselves. However, with this constellation, there will be additional damage potential with each double charge attack. Whether Grin Malkin Hat are present on the field or not, with that, it can be said that Lini 6 constellation also provides a significant increase in damage potential. However, players who find constantly using charge attacks unappealing may not find this constellation very valuable based on their preferred playstyle. Moving on to his artifact sets, by using up his crit rate requirements, Maratius Hunter is the best build for Lini as it can dramatically increase his damage output. His HP mechanic can easily activate the artifacts effect allowing him to build more crit damage. Lini can use Vermilion hereafter to boost his attack even if Lini does not have too much of a priority on his elemental burst. Then there are some alternative relics that you can equip on Lini until you get a good Maratius Hunter. Most notably 4-piece Lava Walker and Wander's Troop sets. Lava Walker increases his Pyro damage and Vandas Troop increases Elemental and Charge Attack damage by 34% at 4 piece. Moving on to his best artifact stats, you don't really need to worry about energy recharge for Lini, which is nice. His requirements are low and his burst isn't that strong anyway, so we'll be focusing purely on his damage. As for Lini's main artifact stats, you'll almost always want to go for Attack on Sands, Pyro damage on your Goblet and Crit on your Circlet. You might also can go with energy recharge for your sands if you really need some. Moving to his weapon section, his best on slot is his signature weapon, the first great magic. It greatly increases movement and attack of Lini and fits the passive and aesthetics of him. And the crit damage and charge attack buff greatly boost the damage of Lini. Lini's team should mostly consist of pyro characters, so the first great magic is scattered for the part of his kit. Lini gains a nice amount of attack for every pyro teammate but non-pyro is not entirely useless, since he still gets a movement speed bonus in return. And his next weapon is Amos Bow. Although Amos Bow doesn't have any crit damage to offer, it does however have a potential for great damage because of high attack substat and the extra damage on both Lini's normal and charge attacks. Just keep in mind that since Bennett is one of the best support for Lini, Amos Bow may face a diminishing return for all the attack stat it provides. And his next weapon is Thundering Pulse. For Thundering Pulse, it's hard for Lini to benefit from most of its passive, since it directly increases the Wilder's normal attack. However, even though it's not optimal, Thundering Pulse is still one of the best weapons for Lini. And his next weapon is Aqua Simulacra. Now the players enter the 5 star weapons realm, it's much easier to find weapons that grant Lini a massive amount of crit damage. And Aqua is one of them. Although Aqua has a low base attack stat, it makes up with the amount of damage Aqua can unleash in the hands of Lini. And Skyward Harp is an amazing weapon for increasing all of the damage sources of Lini. It gives a high base attack and crit rate substat which is great for building. And gives a bonus crit damage that is also great while it has minimal effect. And its next weapon is Polar Star. It has crit rate as main stat which is great for building. 
and you can easily get full stacks with Lini since he uses all part of his skills during rotations. And his next weapon is the Sion of the Blazing Sun which can be obtained from the battle pass if you consider worth getting. It has crit rate substat which is decent for building and his passive works amazingly with the Lini's charge attack. And the next best weapon is Swang of Stillness which can be obtained by crafting a Refinement 5 effect. After the wielder is healed, they will deal 32% more damage for 8 seconds. This can be triggered even when the character is not on the field. Song of Stillness almost offers the same amount of extra damage as Prototype Crescent, especially when fully refined. However, the only difference is it's much easier to benefit from Song of Stillness passive effect, since the only requirement is to have the wielding character healed. As an F2B option, Song of Stillness is a very solid 4 star weapon for Lenny. And his next weapon is Prototype Crescent. It provides movement speed and attack bonus. And Lenny can easily optimize this weapon's effect and a lot weaker than against enemies that does not have a weak point. Prototype Crescent grants Lenny a huge amount of attack if players manage to hit an enemy's weak spot. And his next weapon is Blacklift Warburg. It has an amazing crit damage substat for strike building and can easily boost attacks when faced against multiple enemies but weaker against single target or boss enemies. Despite having the same combo though, Lini isn't similar to Yoimiya as a DBS. Instead of the normal attack spamming playstyle, players who use Lini need to accurately aim their shot to hit the enemies. Therefore, Lini weapons can include bows that enhance charge attacks and encourage hitting the enemy's weak point. Moving to his team comps, his first mono pyro team which contains Lini, Shangling, Bennett and Kazuha. The Mono Pyro is Lini's strongest team comp. It features him as the main DBS, Shangling as a sub DBS to apply Pyro off field, and Bennett to buff the team's attack and provide heals. Lastly, Kasua to buff Pyro damage and apply a debuff using the Verdison Venerer artifact set. This team comp also utilizes the Pyro resonance for an increased attack. And the second Mono Pyro team, it consists of Lini, Shangling, Bennett, and Lynette. This is a F2P variation of the Mono Pyro team comp. Instead of using Kazuha, this team relies on Lynette to fill the role of Animo support. She is Lynette's sister and magic assistant in the game's lore. And the next team is Lynette's Melt team which consists of Lynette, Ganyu, Bennett and Layla. Melt teams are very straightforward and this team comp features Lynette as the Pyro lead. This is a very straightforward team that uses Bennett to buff Lynette's attack, heal the party and activate Pyro resonance. Ganyu and Layla are used to apply cryo off field on enemies and utilize the cryo resonance. Layla also provides a decent shield for defense and interruption resistance. And the next is a vaporized team which consists of Lene, Shangling, Bennett and Kokomi. This classic vaporized team comp can effortlessly defeat any boss monster. Kokomi's reliable off field hydro application and healing can proc vaporize consistently when paired with Lene, Shangling and Bennett. Players can also opt to use Yellen or Shincho if they do not have Sangnomiya Kokomi. And his next is an Burgeon team. This team consists of Lene, Yellen, Nahida and Kokomi. This team relies on Burgeon reaction which is relatively new. It occurs when Dendrocos produced by Bloom reaction of Hydro and Dendro come into contact with the Pyro. When up against an enemy, players should first use Nahida together with Yellen and Kokomi to produce multiple Dendrocos. Then they can finish off the attack by using Lini to trigger Burgeon. Let's move on to his DBS showcase. He is at level 90 and his all talents are at level 9 and his attack is around 2200. And to his crits, his crit rate will be increased to 40 plus 36 which is 76 percentage because of his artifact set Mauritius Hunter for his crit damage 177 percentage. And he is at C1, I am showcasing his mono pyro team which involves Lini, Shangling, Kazuha and Banner. Be entertained by my magician's tricks. Into the wind. Gah! 